Hi, Niklas Heitloff here. Today I have the pleasure to introduce a new feature in XPages, which is one of the most requested features by our customers and a feature that we announced at Packluck. It's the support for accessing relational databases in XPages. And with this feature you can access all types of relational databases now as long as they have a JDBC driver and you can access the data as easily as you can access data in Domino databases using the XPages data sources. Today we published the first release of this feature on OpenNTF. It's part of the extension library and you can run it with Domino 853. And when I say we, I really mean the core XPages development team, especially Phil Rion and Jim Quill. Phil provided this deck as documentation and it contains a whole lot of detail that you should really read. What I want to do in this video, however, is to go through a sample application and show you some demos and the source code behind it. Now this is the sample application. It's its own database, xpagesjdbc.nsf, and it uses a Derby database that comes with the extension library. Now this Derby database is not meant to be used for production usage, but it's, um, it's usable for demonstration and development purposes. So before I could run these samples, I had to run some setup and I've already done this. So let me show, let me show you what it produced. In my Domino data directory, I have now a subdirectory with Derby and my database XPages JDBC. Now let me show a couple of things um, that I had to do um, or that the sample application, sample application did in order to create this database. Now the first thing you need is a so-called JDBC file that you can um, put in here as a file resource. You give it a name Derby1 which maps which is the, the connection name and in here you define the driver class and the URL and the URL is database type specific in this case for Derby this is how it looks like. Um, there's a placeholder pointing to the Domino directory and then the database name and we also tell it to create the database um, if it doesn't exist yet the first time you try to access it. And then there are the user credentials. Now the other thing um, that I wanted to point out is when I um, clicked on this initialize database button and the setup on the setup X page um, this Java code was run which created my tables. There's only two tables, users and states, that's, that we're going to use in this sample. And the other thing I wanted to show before I show the actual samples is um, your utility class. It's called JDBC Util. And that's a class as well as the database helper class. These are classes that you as a Java developer might want to use in order to get the maximal flexibility. Um, so the JDBC util class, for example, contains functionality to get the connection by name. Um, there's also methods uh, like table exists and list tables. And actually, let me switch over to my Java IDE. So this is the complete list of methods of this class. And the second class, the database helper and the gen um, Derby database helper class, are classes that abstract some of the database vendor specific X SQL syntax. Okay, but now going back to the sample, so after the setup has been done, I can run this first sample and this is now a view from a relational database and it looks and feels like a notes view um, because it uses the same view panel control where I can page through the um, pages, I can jump to a specific page and I can even sort the columns by clicking here on the column headers. Now let's see how this looks like in the source code. Um, this is the X page and again it's the same view panel control. Now when I select that and I go to data you can see that not a domino view is selected but the um, JDBC query type or entry and then in order to set these properties, I need to go to all properties and expand data. And that's where I see my new options here. Now the first one is this new data source called JDBC query. Now let me switch quickly to another X page and show the other options that you have in here. So let's remove it and add a new one. And as you can see, in addition to the Domino view and Domino 
document, we also have now the JDBC query data source and the JDBC row set data source. Um, so in the next samples, I will use the JDBC query and later the row set. So let's close this and go back. Now let me point out a couple of um, key properties here. <coughs> okay, so the first one is the um, the data source that I just showed. Then you can determine whether you want um, to calculate the count. Now that is important if you want to know the exact number of pages. Um, however, at the same time, obviously it costs performance, which is why this is an optional parameter. Um, the other thing you need to define, obviously, is the connection, na uh, connection name, Derby1, which maps to the JDBC file name. Um, and you can also define um, a default order. In this case, it's the column ID. And actually, one thing I forgot to mention is in instead of a connection name and using a JDBC file, you could even pass in the connection URL here directly. Now, this, is imp this could be useful for development purposes if you just want to avoid having to write this JDBC file. Um, however, it is not recommended for production usage, usage because um, it, um, when, you, when you use that parameter, we do not use our connection pool. Right now, we have our own connection pool, which caches connections and um, closes connections, etc., automatically. Um, and at this point, we have our own one. We are also looking into using another one um, from Apache, Apache DB connection pool. Um, and again, that functionality you only get when you use the connection name. Um, what else? So there's one more um, property or parameter that I wanted to point out, and that is, in this case, the SQL table name. So right here, we only referred to the SQL table users. Um, and in the back end, um, a SQL statement is generated, select star from users. So that was the first sample. Now a variation of that one is what you see here. Now the um, user experience is almost identical. It's the same table again, same columns. But what is different now is that you do not see the, um, the amount of pages. You can still page, but you don't know how many pages there are. And that's because, as I already mentioned, in this case, uh, we do not set the parameter um, calculate count. This one is empty. Okay, the other parameters are identical, except in this case, we don't pass in a table name, but we pass in our own SQL statement, which in this case is this the same one because we, we return everything, but it could be different. Now, yet another variation of that same sample is what you see here. Um, again, it's the same uh, user experience. Now, in this case, the only difference is that we pass in not an SQL statement directly, but instead an SQL statement from a file. And again, that file is stored here as file resource. And we pass in all of these IDs but you could obviously also pass in only a subset or a completely different SQL statement. Um, and then yet another variation of the sample is what you can see here. Now in this case, we first of all select the state uh, and then we get the subset of these entries of these users from the state. Now let me show how this looks like in the code. Now first of all, uh, the first interesting thing is actually what you see here in the combo box. Now, in order to get the different states, um, we do a JDBC column lookup using an add formula. And this is very simple here. You only pass in the connection name, the table name, and the column name, and that's it. And I, um, I'm going to say a little bit more about these add functions in a little. But let's move down now to the... Um, um, to the actual data source, which is here. Now, um, again, we pass in, or we use an SQL query, but this one now um, contains a placeholder, a question mark. And this parameter we can um, set using here this SQL parameter tag. 
And in this case, we just give it the value from view scope dot state, uh, which is what we set in um, in the combo box. And that that's how easy it is. You could also have multiple of these placeholders and then multiple of these SQL parameters right here. And actually, one thing I forgot to mention. So let's quickly go back to the first um, sample here. Um, I said we are just using a view panel and in here we define our JDBC query. Now the way you bind data to the columns is very easy. Um, it's just by column name, right? And th those are the names um, of the columns in your schema. Or alternatively, you can define here your um, um, where is it? Your variable user, um, and then you can um, refer to it via user dot city or to any column you want. So that's just one thing I forgot to mention. Okay, good. So let's go back. Now these have been all these ex uh, the samples showing the um, capabilities of the JDBC query data source. And the JDBC query data source is really meant to, to handle larger amount of data um, for read-only purposes. Now the second type of data source is the ROSET data source. And that's a data source that also allows you to manipul manipulate the data. So the way it works is, again, it reads in a whole set of entries of rows, if you want. Um, it caches the values in memory then you can manipulate them and at the end you need to apply these changes. So let's just um, take this one here for example, um, open it, let's change the first name to Niklas and say OK. Now it's in the table now but it's not in my database yet so I need to, to, to say save changes first and now it's finally stored and committed to my Derby database. So let's take a look at that source code row set data source. So at the very top we define it. Um, JDBC row set, connection name again Derby1 and we use the variable JDBC data1. Um, we point it against the um, table users and now we can um, and now we can save the data. This is the um, save button, save changes. You can say JDBC data1 dot accept changes and in our dialog, we can get the data of a specific row via get row um, and can create a new row via JDBC data dot new row. So that's as, as easy as that is. Okay, so let's go back to the sample. Some other kind of um, convenience functionality um, or debug functionality um, you can enter for testing purposes your um, select uh, SQL statements here directly. So let's say um, select from users and then we execute that statement and you get returned the, the output. Um, however, what you see here is not a view control. You cannot sort it, but it's an extension of our debug object called the dump object. So let's see how this looks like. Um, JDBC query. And all we really do here okay, is to use this dump object, which has been extended now to also accept these JDBC data types. Um, we get the connection, we create an SQL statement, um, and we finally execute it, and that's it. Now, the same um, dump object is used here. Um, it's another tool for developers, if you want. Uh, where you can see metadata of, um, of the driver. Uh, you can see information about schemas, table types, and also um, type information, which might be the most useful piece of information here. And, um, you know, if I haven't mentioned it yet, this uses again the connection pool, and the connection is automatically closed after the um, request has been processed. So it's the same lifecycle as for for the um, nodes or Domino session class. And then the last set of samples is around add functions. So it's a very um, similar sample. Again, I can take an action and say update record. Let's say this one here, 104, and update it to Boston. And now it says Boston. 
um, and this only uses add functions. So let me show you that. Add functions. Okay, so here I define my JDBC query data source again, and then I have different um, JDBC um, or add functions. First one is um, JDBC insert. I pass in the connection name, the table's name, the table name, and I pass in the value. And what's interesting, interesting here is that we pass in the value as a JSON object which makes it really easy to, to be created, especially from this JavaScript code. And in addition to the JDBC insert add function, we also have um, a JDBC update and we have um, a JDBC delete. So that concludes the demo. Now, a last thing I wanted to mention is is about the drivers because probably the first or the next thing you want to do after you have tried the simple samples simple, uh, simple samples is to create a sample that works against one of your actual databases and in that case you need to install and deploy the actual JDBC driver of your database management system and there are different ways to do that as you can see here on this slide there's more documentation available in general we suggest to put the um, JDBC driver in an OSGI plugin and deploy it as such and you can see an example as part of the extension library because that's what we have done with a Derby driver so that was all that I had for today I hope you enjoyed it and please let us know what you think thanks a lot bye bye